Okay, let's talk about the FTCE General Knowledge Test. And uh, FTCE stands for Florida Teacher Certification Examinations. And uh, for those of you who have to take the FTCE General Knowledge Test, basically everybody who's going to become a teacher in the state of Florida has to take this. It's a basic skills uh, test. So if you're watching this video, I assume you are preparing to take this test, and that's very good. And of course, it has to do with basic skills, so that's reading and writing, and of course, my favorite subject, math. And what we're going to do in this video is take a look at a math practice problem that you should be able to handle pretty nicely if you're fully prepared for the FTCE general knowledge test. So we'll get to that in a second. But first, I'm going to introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tabla Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher, and over several years have constructed many online math classes to include an FTCE general knowledge math test prep course. I'm going to leave a link to that in the description of this video. But um, all my courses have taken me years to construct. And the way I uh, do uh, specific courses like this uh, test prep course is I really do my research on what's on this exam and try to get, try to build a custom math curriculum to really, you know, teach you what you need to know, not to over teach you because you're not going to need to know calculus and, you know, super advanced math like that. I mean, if you know that, that's great, but I would characterize the math on the FTCE general knowledge test. Uh, and, you know, it's pretty descriptive too. It's general knowledge. It's basic skills. So I would call, you know, I would describe it as high school level math. Okay. So we're talking about algebra, geometry, uh, and of course, all your other uh, more fundamental things like fractions, decimals, and stuff like that. So, um, so that's pretty descriptive. So if you're not, you know, strong in math, you're definitely going to have to, uh, you know, brush up on these topics. You know, algebra, geometry, uh, other topics as well. But you're not going to have to know super advanced um, uh, math topics. Okay. All right. So with that being said, let's get to this practice problem now. The way I like to do these videos is, first of all, I'm going to give you the problem here in a second. Um, I'll say right off the bat, do not use a calculator. Okay, so <laughs> put your calculators away. Um, so I'm going to describe what the problem is, and I'll tell you what to do. And then I'm going to give a hint. Now, if you don't want to hear the hint, okay, then pause the video. Then obviously I'm going to solve the problem. Okay, so let's get to it. So here I have this, uh, uh, I got a multiplication problem. So I have 25 million multiplied by 3 million. So what I'd like you to do is multiply these numbers and write your answer in scientific notation. Okay. So write your answer in scientific notation. All right. So what is scientific notation? Well, if you don't want to uh, hear this and you're like, oh, I already know what it is, I can do the problem, go ahead and pause the video and do this. So now I'm going to give you a um, um, some hints here uh, so you can kind of get along. Of course, uh, this problem has nothing to do with your ability to use a calculator. I know you can just break out your cell phone and plug this in and give me the answer. not interested in that. I'm interested in your knowledge of scientific notation. Okay, so here comes the hint. All right, so what is scientific notation? Well, scientific notation uh, is kind of descriptive in, a, in, a, in and of itself. It's scientific notation. It's a notation. It's the way we, uh, to write something. That's notation, right? And then in science. So in science, what's, you know, what do we deal with? We deal with you know, super large numbers and super small numbers. So if you're an astronomer, you know, you have, you know, one planet to like another uh, planet or star. You know, you're dealing with light years and right? trillions of miles, uh, et cetera. Um, however, if you are a genetic engineer and we're dealing with or a physicist, you're dealing with electrons and protons and all this other craziness. You're dealing with super small values. So you're either dealing with in science, we could be dealing with very, very, very small values and, or very, very large values. So things like, you know, for example, you know, 20, uh, I'm not even going to try to attempt to describe this number, but I'll just write some crazy number like this. Okay. So this could describe maybe, 
uh, how many electrons are in a particular, you know, uh, cell, all right? Um, or maybe how many miles or light years one galaxy is from another. But what is the situation? Well, this is like, you know, a really cumbersome way to write a very, very large number. We want to be able to write very, very large numbers or very, very, very small numbers in a better way. So that's scientific notation, and it has to do with using the powers of 10, okay? Using powers of 10. Okay, so let's go to a simpler example. Of sci that's what scientific notation is. Hopefully that's refreshed your memory, and you're like, oh, okay, um, I kind of remember this stuff. Let's take a look at a quick, simple example of how to write a number in scientific notation, and then we'll actually solve this problem. So what if we had 75,000, okay? Well, the way we write numbers in scientific notation, and you, you're going to need to know how to write a number in scientific notation and to take a number that's in scientific notation and write it in standard notation like this. But we need to identify where the decimal point is at. So 75,000 is the same thing as 75,000.0 or 0 .00. But here's the deal. The decimal point is located right there. So in scientific notation, what you want to do is we want to um, uh, rewrite this value, so it's 75,000, in a form. And here's the form. It's going to be a number somewhere between... Uh, 1 and 10, okay, right here, less than 10, but greater than uh, at least 1, okay, and that's going to be multiplied by 10 to some power, okay, so this is the general idea behind scientific notation, that's just a general description, uh, and just trying to jog your memory, all right, so here, the way to do this is, and I don't want to go off and, um, make this into a complete full lesson on scientific notation because either you know it or you don't know it, at least for the purposes of this little practice problem. So we have to count the decimal points from here to here, okay? So 7.5 is a number between 1 and 10. So that's 1. i got to move this decimal point 1, 2, 3, 4. So I can write 75,000 as 7.5 times 10. Now... I had 75,000, but I had to move the decimal point over four places to the left, so that's going to be a positive four. Okay, so 7.5 times 10 to the fourth power is the same thing as 75,000. Okay, but the way we did that is we identified where the decimal point was <clears throat> in this in this value, this number, and we scooted it over, okay, using the digits of the number, to form a new number that's between 1 and 10. So 7.5 is between 1 and 10. And then we just counted how many decimal places do we have to move over to the left. That number, okay, in this case it was 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, okay, that's going to be my exponent to my power of 10. So this is scientific notation. All right, so let's go ahead and apply this now. If you are still not sure or you're confused, look, use this as feedback, okay? But if you kind of remember this stuff, go ahead and try to do the problem. All right, let's go ahead and now write these two numbers in scientific notation using the same techniques that I just talked about. Okay, so 25 million, I can write that as 2.5, okay, times 10 to the, now here's the decimal point, right? I know it's 2.5 because 25, I can write this as a number between 1 and 10 as 2.5, so that's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, okay? Uh, again, I'm skipping over a lot of stuff here because I can't turn this into a full lesson on scientific notation. Um, so, you know, hopefully, you know, you're like, all right, I get it. All right, now here, <clears throat> excuse me, let's take a look at uh, 3 million. I can write that as 3 times 10 to the what? So that's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, it's going to be basically 3, right? So these two numbers, <clears throat> 25 million, I can represent like so. And 3 million I can represent like this. So now 
the great thing about scientific notation is I can, this is all multiplication. It's this times this times this times this. So really I can go 2.5. I can just uh, move the orders. When you're multiplying numbers, again, like 3 times 7 times 8, order doesn't make a difference. Okay, so I can write this as uh, 7 times 3 times 8 or 8 times 3 times 7 are all equivalent. So I can shift these things around. This is all multiplication. So I can think of this as uh, 2.5 times 3 times 10 to the 7th times 10 to the 6th power. Okay. So again, without using your calculator, I can go, okay, 2.5 times 3. Um, hopefully, uh, all of you out there can do this calculation. This is 7.5. Okay times 10 to the, I have 10 to the 7th times 10 to the 6th. So you got to know your basic um, power and exponent rules. When I'm multiplying uh, two powers with the same base, here it's 10, all I need to do is add the exponents. So that would be what? Uh, 13, right? So this is our final answer. 7.5 times 10 to the 13th power is the product of these two numbers, 25 million times 3 million, written in uh, scientific notation. Okay, so how did you do, all right? If you um, were able to get this problem uh, totally correct without any hint, I mean, that's, that's pretty good, okay? But again, that's by no means a complete verification that you're totally ready for the FTC general knowledge um, uh, math section. Okay, there is a lot of other math that you got to know, but still that's pretty impressive that you remember, you know, you remember this, okay? Um, if you were able to do this with a little bit of a hint, that's good too. If you were completely lost, don't panic because you learned this somewhere along the line. I mean, just by the fact that you're watching this video, you're at the level of education that you're gonna be taking this test, You've had this math before, but of course you probably don't remember it, all right? But, you know, don't panic. You need to come up with a good study plan and take this, you know, uh, test seriously, of which I'm sure you, you are. But if math is not your thing, you know, uh, or even if you were like good in math, you're going to have to relearn it. You're going to have to immerse yourself, you know, in it. Okay? And it's only going to make you a better teacher you know, by doing the hard work to relearn all this stuff. Okay? And you just don't know what topics are going to come up on this test. You'll be like, well, you know, maybe I want to study, you know, uh, linear equations or quadratic equations or functions or percentages or fractions. you got to know it all, okay? <laughs> You're not going to know what kind of test questions are going to be coming at you. So uh, the smart thing to do is just to, you know, build up your math skills one at a time. All right, so let's go ahead and finish up this video. Again, I'm going to leave a link to my FTCE General Knowledge Math Test Prep course. Uh, I'll leave the link to that in the description of this video. I think you'll really uh, like the course. If you're new to my YouTube channel, um, hopefully you consider subscribing. I've been on YouTube for a good 12 years, at least the time of this video. I already have hundreds of videos on my channel that can help you out uh, on the FTC General Knowledge uh, Math section. So uh, hopefully you'll, you know you want to take a look at that. If you like my teaching style, you can already ha you know learn a lot from me just by the videos on my channel. But my best, most organized work is going to be in my math courses. Um, if you like the video, definitely appreciate a thumbs up and leave us some feedback. You know what's uh, motivating you to become a teacher? You know maybe you had a teacher that made a big impact uh, on you. Um, you know what subject or what level you're going to be teaching. Um, any feedback is good feedback. I will say this much, um, you know, teaching is a career that requires requires a lot of professional knowledge and really, you know, your your testing or your education, it, it, it doesn't stop, okay? You're going to continuously learn, okay? You're going to have to keep up with your professional knowledge and if you're going to make teaching a long-term career, you're likely going to at least get a master's degree, okay? That's most teachers, Um Obviously, if you don't know this, the more education you have, the, that impacts how much money you make as a teacher as well. But you just need to continue on with your education and test and certifications. So it's just part of being a teacher. Okay. All right. So with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your education career and obviously on the FTC general knowledge test. 
Thank you for your time and have a great day.